Oh, the list, the list, the list, the list. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, we'll do that one. Right, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and again we're going to sit down and have a shop chat, so fags at the ready and Red Bull. I've literally lost my lighter, I'm not trying to be some fucking hard nut. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. So today we're going to talk about a bit about clutches. This is the RG, it's all on the bench so we might as well use it. Um, friction plates, all gooey and sticky and lovely. You can see where a lot of the oil's burnt on, so this is makes the point of um, why I use oil because the whole thing gets hot, 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 hot. Um, so that's your clutch pack, and then we're going to look at our clutch boss uh, basket. Boss is the other one, idiot. Um, so, um, what you're going to see soon is the SV. Uh, I've ordered a new SV clutch. I am going to take the old clutch out and I'm going to send that away um, to John. There's a guy called John Sykes who does the repairs for SV clutches. Um, was it DLs and TLs? I don't think the TL had it, I don't know. But anyway, uh, the V-Strum, bloody whatever it's called. And um, the problem we're going to basically just talk about the problem before we've even seen it. I'm waiting for Suzuki to send me the clutch. Um, and I'm sure that the new one will need a modification, but basically I just need it back on the road properly. It's just chuddering like a knobhead. The reason why is, is the clutch the clutch basket is this aluminium section here. This gear is the second half um, of the mating pair for your primary reduction and as you can see oh, fuck me fire slippy hands it's a helical gear why helical gears helical gears are quieter i'm 3d printing some stuff just some teeth basically so we can look at the profile involute gears and how they work and so on pressure angles and blah 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 um in this we have a, a an interior sleeve there you can see and we also have a awesome needle roller bearing in there a high load high speed needle roller bearing we have the couple a couple of plates. We have um, the dampener springs, which I'll do a video about um, entirely on its own because we need to talk about that. And then we have the three rivets and the encapsulation plates on both sides of. No, it's not both sides. It's just this one side, I believe. You can see the other side of the rivets there. Basically, as engine power is transferred to this gear, this whole thing should move in unison. What is wrong with the SV clutch? The inside of uh, the clutch basket tends to wear. Uh, I think it's in straight aluminium. I don't know until I see it. Um, where that is a forged insert. So this is a uh, steel insert with the roller bearing between. So that's in a sense the outer race. And then this sleeve on the inside is the inner race. This just allows your clutch to freewheel like so on your input shaft for your gearbox. Wonderful. Uh, with the, as little amount of friction as they can get away with. Um, these two, riv these three rivets, you can see that's what rivets the whole thing together. And then these protrusions you can see in the bottom there, they are for your springs to have clearance so your dampener springs can basically flex and move and work. Problem with the SV, um, like I say, is this inner hub seal here. You can have that replaced and it's actually these um, rivets. They tend to bite into the aluminium which basically means when we get the SV clutch out, what I'm expecting to see is that this outer gear here will rotate and rock separate to the clutch basket. That's what gives you your chudder. So when the RPM of the engine is alternating because we cannot hold perfect RPM, it might say 3000 RPM, but that's an approximation. It's around there. The engine is fluttering up and down, air density changes, thermal expansion rates, um, all sorts of reason and the metering of fuel is never perfect and combustion is never perfect mixing is never perfect and you are constantly loading the engine it's nothing's you know it's an it's a dynamic system it's not a constant rate system because that happens 
this clutch starts to do this now with this clutch it's fine you can see the whole thing moving in unison with the sv it's not it's rocking backwards and forwards the more it rocks backwards and forwards the more wear starts to occur because the rivets are the holes for the rivets are wallowed out as it moves it means that the rivets can then move independent of the clutch basket from the actual primary drive and that means that you're going faster um, so there's going to be more force which means there's more force on the inside of the holes which means the holes open up quicker so you get mild chudder it's a mix of um, chatter and chudder that's what we call it ch a chudder and it basically it just falls off a cliff it, no, it doesn't fall off a cliff it's, it gradually gets worse um, but anyway that's what we're expecting to see in the SV let's just hope we're right but anyway what I want to talk about is um, some of the uh, wear that you get on clutches now you can see on the inside of these if I can give you get you in you can see there you see all these striations you can see see all these little shiny striations on the inside now you can see them on the outside here that doesn't really matter but it's on these sides here what you'll see is if your clutch is quite old and we'll probably see it with the SV as well is that these grooves are quite deep and what this is is where the, f the prongs, the fingers on your pressure, your friction plates are basically hitting because there is clearance between there, there has to be clearance so if you hold this still there has to be some kind of rotational clearance there, it's not much but what they do is they basically apply pressure on the ends of these fingers when you accelerate and when you engine brake it works the opposite way around so it rotates that way when you accelerate and this way when you use engine braking because the whole system is reversed and what this does is these little sides they bite into the sides of this aluminium so these plates will slowly start to eat away at the inside of this basket now it also wears away the plates themselves as well you can't see that it wears away the plates as well you can see on the edges there there you can see all the shiny spots here where it rubs thing is you get these and you chuck these away hopefully this clutch basket will last you the entire life of your machine now what happens is is it wears grooves in and it wears grooves in where the clutch is engaged as in you have let go of your clutch lever so getting our magical book of drawing out or what have you let me zoom you back out again what happens is is you will have your prong and it'll have these little indents that you can see that's just shiny bits on this clutch it's not really that bad and this is where power is applied and your clutch plaque is together and if you actually measure the spacings the spacings between these will be the thickness of your steel plates now why is this a problem full stop well it's when you come to disengage your clutch it is really jumpy and bitey and fucking horrible because this finger here has to ride out it needs to ride out now it's not the end of the world how do i describe this oh yeah sorry the way we're looking at this is end on so in a sense like that so we're looking straight down the top of it so our fingers looking that way so if we're looking from this orientation here well you can't fucking see that this orientation here we're looking straight down there like so um and what happens is is that when you try and open your clutch by pulling your clutch lever in this thing is meant to separate and it doesn't want to it doesn't disengage very well and that means that your clutch doesn't really want to disengage and you it feels like you're slipping your clutch even though you've pulled your clutch in so the remedy to this is what thousands and millions of people have done before is to get we'll move that out of the way we don't need that anymore is to get your clutch basket get yourself a file and file these off right you have to be very careful when you do this right you can't just attack it with a file for the simple fact is let me get a file out um, so you think I'll just get myself a file out I'll get myself a fine cut file something like this I'll just stick this on and I'll just start rocking and rolling this is something that you need to do inside you need to sit there and spend a good half an hour to an hour doing this and what you need to do or a good way to do it is to get yourself a permanent marker and basically or dicum and basically cover the whole thing in permanent marker and what you want to do is you want to make sure that your file is perpendicular to this surface so this surface is flat 
and you want to make sure you're running your file along it um, making sure that you are perpendicular to it don't start putting a fucking chamfer on it or an angle on it or out stupid like that the next thing you want to do is you want to just basically in files you know you only stroke one way yeah you can pull back with no force but who cares you basically rub across the file like this and basically what you want to do is take off a minimal amount of material and really what you're aiming for and we'll do this we'll do this with the sv clutch basket because i'm sure it's in a worse state than this one is because this really isn't bad at all i'll just pop this straight back in this really isn't a problem these are impressions like polishing impressions i can't really feel any ridges with my nail what you want to do is you want to stroke it until you have your just say that's your prong this is the bit you're rubbing against you've got your dicom or your bits of blue pen what you want to do is you want to do it until you've got little lines like this just little lines like that of blue pen left i mean literally really my just so you can see them so you're just about rubbing them away don't completely keep on going and say oh i just want to get rid of all the blue because the problem with that is is then what you're going to do is you're going to then or you could make one prong thinner than the other and that is a big problem Machining it with a rotary table that is really well dialed in, basically passing an end mill past all of these, that is a better thing to do. That is the precise way to do it. So basically you run an end mill past it, you basically run an end mill like this across it, and then you turn it, and then you cross it, and then you turn it, and you cross it, and you cross it, and you cross it on both sides. The reason why you'd want to do that and clamp this down so this is all solid to your rotary table, make sure you've got a rotary table that's really good uh, and do all of the ones first and then when you do it the other way you take the backlash out of it and then just make sure you calculate it properly you do your divisions by how many prongs there are and away you go um, and generally what you'll do is you'll do this side that you'll do all of these and then you'll come back and do all the other sides why is this important if you take more off one prong than the other what's going to happen is, is these are fixed you know these are fixed geometry parts they are rigid parts so what will happen is is if this finger You've taken loads off more than just say the opposing one what's going to happen is, is you're going to hit this one and this one on this side is going to have clearance it's not going to engage at all which means basically what you're going to do is you're going to dig in here not only quite hard but you're going to also double the force the simple fact is you're not digging in on this one and you are digging on this one and that can be multiplied all the way around if you have one that's just high and the rest are all shallow this one is going to wear like a motherfucker and then when you come back 20,000 30,000 miles later you'll see that one of these has really taken a fucking brain or could even break uh, chances of breaking are very small but this is what I'm trying to say to you so basically what you do is the depth of these cuts is the depth of the wear which means that's how much pressure it receives if you blew this and then you file it to the point where you've nearly got rid of all the blue and there's that thin little slither then you know you're pretty much you're there you haven't gone further than you should it's a crude way of doing it like i said the best way to do it is to just have it machined that's the more accurate way to do it <coughs> so i've seen these guys there's loads of videos on youtube big fucking course cut file and just keep on going until they disappear well you've got to be more accurate than that get yourself a really fine cut file so every pass that you take you're taking away fuck all really take your time do it in really good light you know set it up like this not on this this is all slippy and slidey super slippy but basically just sit here and take your sweet ass time go around and do each one as an example i'll show you the difference between the pressure contact areas because i've just seen it there so you can see from this picture um i'll point and then i'll show you the pictures but you can see that this bottom one i don't know if you can let's see if we can actually get on video instead of just relying on the pictures you can see on this bottom one here you can see that there's a lot of indentations all the way down um, all the way across this all the way down to the root where well, if you look at this one the one above it there let you see there's no wear pattern there at the bottom there's no wear pattern it's quite heavy on the top quite heavy there quite heavy there but you can see that that's even heavier this this one i'm trying to look at the camera screen instead of actually looking at the bloody thing but you can see there's all it, the the pressure changes that one's quite low is that one you know what i mean and that's just from the die casting itself you know oops 
that's just from the die casting itself, you know, there's a bit of unevenness there. It's not the end of the world. The whole point is of this is just not to go fucking mad and just say, I'll keep on going until it fucking disappears. Because with these big coarse files, you're probably taking fucking, you know, 50 microns more, 100 microns more than you should have done. And that means that there is more chance. Now, how much can you do this? I would only recommend shaving these off, depending how big the grooves are. So it's a good idea to try and measure the groove thickness. How can you measure the groove thickness if you don't have you know, all this sexy equipment, you know, these guestometers are all fine and fair enough. What you do is take a picture end on so you can see the grooves from the side and then get yourself a ruler or get yourself a scale, uh, you know, something like these digital jobbies. Measure at the root or measure somewhere close. Basically, that's 22.58. Take a picture of that, the distance there. Go onto a computer, upload the picture and then you can literally measure, there's a thing called, um, what's that bloody piece of software called? It's called J something. Uh, and basically you just draw lines and it counts the pixels and you can basically say, right, this is 22.58 millimeters. And you draw a little line, how, how deep is that? How deep should you go? You should never go more than uh, set 25% of these prongs. So if your wear has passed 25% of this entire prong, the thickness there, um, yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to use a buy a new clutch. Generally, the it doesn't get there, but if you're heavy with it or something shit like that. Hope that meant image J. That's the fucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, it's fucking hot. How hot is it? Right now, oh, 26. Fuck me. It's acclimatisation. I know 26 degrees Celsius isn't hot for a lot of people, but it was like really cool the other day. It was like 17, and it's just that massive sweep of temperature. Any road, I hope that makes sense. I hope that's useful to some of you, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>